The Cannabis Show is for information only. You should always consult with a qualified and licensed physician or other medical care provider. Welcome to The Cannabis Show. Today on the show, Evan teaches us how to deal with odor on growing tips. Basil tells us about one of his buds, and we explore the strain Orange by Spectrum. Keep watching. What's in a name? You've heard that before on The Cannabis Show, and that's why I like licensed producer Spectrum's take on their medical cannabis. They don't call it anything, well, except colors. In this case, the strain I'm going to talk about is orange. Yep, orange. Listed on Spectrum's website as a hybrid indica, I assumed that this could be a good daytime indica strain. A typical effect would be that of stress relief, calmness, and attention to detail, and I was correct. Spectrum's Orange is a delight from the opening of the bottle. Blasted with a strong terpene profile of myrcene, caryophyllene, and limonene, this strain is a beauty from a citrusy scent and taste to the actual effects. After a few vapes of Spectrum Orange, I knew this strain from before. But what was the name of it? But then, what does it matter? I found that orange was a good day or early evening bud as it kept me focused, calm, and anxiety-free. Patients have also reported the same effects with added uses for pain, stress, fibromyalgia, depression, and to enhance one's appetite. Orange by Spectrum. Hello, everybody. My name is Kate, and I am so pleased to introduce you to a friend of mine. I've known her for a couple of years. She's been on the scene almost since the beginning, I think. Kelly Gibson, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So we'd like to talk to you about uh, your experience within the cannabis realm, because like we say, you did start in it quite a while ago. Can you tell us about that? Uh, I sure did, yes, absolutely. Uh, so really my cannabis journey began when I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease in 2001. Crohn's disease is basically an illness that affects your digestive system. Currently there's no cure or real, uh, real treatments at this time. So after struggling for many, many years, the first while uh, doing the traditional methods and pharmaceuticals, my husband actually encouraged me to uh, pursue my medical cannabis prescription. But however, there were quite a few hurdles at that time because it was uh, quite a while ago. So uh, the first thing I did obviously was I did go to several of my own doctors, uh, which they all did say no. Uh, the second thing I had to do was um, I did then purchase a list from a consultant uh, who actually provided me a list of names of doctors who were willing to prescribe. Uh, at that point, I did contact one of those doctors on the list here in town. Uh, and uh, he uh, did ask me then when I saw him uh, to write a letter to the Alberta College of Physicians and Surgeons uh, asking basically for permission for this doctor to prescribe the cannabis uh, in a in a in an effort to protect his license so that his uh, medical license wouldn't be taken away. Um, and after finally getting through all those hurdles, I did receive my first MMAR uh, prescription to use cannabis medically. And I did use it uh, quite successfully uh, since then. I've used it um, every day and I use it at uh, every different method. Um, and I have been uh, successfully treating my own illness with the cannabis, uh, and I'm not using any pharmaceuticals at this time. However, obviously, I do recommend that you uh, consult a professional before changing your treatment plan. Wow. So 2001, that was the very first year that people were allowed to access it for medical purposes. That's when my journey started. Legally. Yes. Yeah. So you went, to, uh, your doctor asked for your permission, and, and the college actually... Yeah took your opinion and, and ran with it. Yes, they did provide me with a letter sort of giving uh, neutral um, options to my doctor so that he would feel comfortable uh, prescribing it at that time. And obviously things have improved a lot. Uh, yeah. The system is not the same. Um, thankfully, uh, um, some of the, the changes have provided better options for patients. It's a lot more accessible than it was when I first uh, went through the pro program. Um, uh, back then, though, however, uh, the cannabis product I was being sent, uh, it was um, not the, the highest quality, uh, but however, it was from a legal source, and at that time, it was uh, an expense uh, uh, to my taxes, so there was a desirable uh, factor there to, to continue doing it uh, 
aside from all of those hurdles. So, wow. Yeah. Did you have access to oil? I guess not. Uh, not at that time. It was just dried herb uh, from the uh, prairie plant farms. Uh, and um, they did send it just kind of milled up in one bag. There was only just one, one choice. Uh, there was no options. And uh, that's how the program really began. And mm. uh, thankfully, it's changed a lot since then. No kidding. Mm -hmm. So just because of the nature of your ailment and that it's internal, did you find that doing oils helped? more than uh, ingesting through the lungs? Um, yes and no. Um, high fat is a stimulant for Crohn's, people with uh, uh, digestive illnesses. So actually tinctures work a little bit better, anything that's absorbed through your saliva as opposed to an oil, uh, which is high fat. Oh, interesting. Um, but uh, I do make a lot of uh, coconut oil for my topicals. Uh, so uh, that is uh, one way I use those high fat ingredients uh, that are being converted uh, these days. But uh, for as far as uh, the most successful way to treat my Crohn's is uh, using obviously THC and CBD, whatever form, whether that's being vaped or, or uh, even some oils that have a less of a high fat content. Uh, there are some mediums that are a little bit better than others, but uh, definitely have to be careful with that aspect. Um, patches, um, those are really uh, helpful. So, Oh, you can um, get transdermal patches? Um, through some, some other sources you can. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, but that is probably the best uh, option for people with uh, IBS and things like that. So is then you have right? your, yeah, your continual release absorption there. So that's yeah, a great there idea. are some options. So you're so. under control now? More uh, or less? Absolutely. I've been in remission for a really long time, yeah. uh, more than 10 years maybe. That's fabulous. Uh, I haven't been to the emergency room in several, several years, knock Yay. on wood. Uh, and I'm not using any pharmaceuticals of any kind at the moment. So, so cannabis was more successful than pharmaceuticals? It absolutely was. I would for yeah. sure say that. So you had to say to your husband that he was right. He was most definitely <laughs> right, yes. And he also uh, helped me to learn how to grow it myself. Nice. So I do have my ACMPR permit to grow my own personal medicine more or less and it is beneficial because I can also make the topicals and things like that that I need uh, to treat treat other problems that I have secondary problems that you get after having a, a chronic illness so yeah yeah but you're able to work yes I've I've worked uh, full-time now um, and uh, um, basically my journey brought me to a career in the industry um, soon after I got my prescription, I decided that I could help more people by uh, starting to work at a local cannabis clinic. So I did do that for quite a few years. Um, and then at the same time, I was also writing for several cannabis publications, sharing my experience on lots of topics, uh, recipes, strain reviews, um, how to grow, uh, all, all types of topics, uh, just to share my knowledge with uh, those who are also struggling like I was. That's great. And who are you working with now? Uh, right now, I work for Spirit Leaf. They're a, a recreational dispensary franchise business uh, here, and they're operating in four provinces. Uh, for them, I do a, a variety of roles. I do their content creation. I also do a little bit of purchasing for them, which is awfully fun. And uh, yeah. sec uh, thirdly, I do a lot of training. So I am utilizing a lot of my experience and knowledge that I've gained over the years. And I get to train their staff and their franchise members. And, and it has uh, been a real rewarding uh, experience for me overall, turning a, a negative into a positive. So Have you ever making yeah. uh, limonene out of lemons or something? Yes, like that? that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's fabulous. Yeah. So where can people find out more about you? You're pretty present on social media. I am a little bit. Yes, I do have an Instagram account. So uh, you can look me up. Uh, Kelly has Crohn's. Uh, so I do have an Instagram account as well as a, a YouTube channel that I have a few uh, videos on how to eat with I I IBS and things like that. And, and even a little bit on medical marijuana. And so you look for those and uh, uh, definitely give, uh, give me a subscription if you can, please. Thank well, you. great. We'll definitely have all of your social media information in the comments. Absolutely. I'm happy to give advice, and especially if you want advice about how to get into the industry too, I, I'd be happy to give some, some information about that as well. So. Ooh, give us a tidbit of that. Oh, sure. Well, my best advice to everyone is, is to start going to the expos, volunteer at the expos, go to the expos. There's always networking events happening in Calgary. There's three or four this month even for that matter. Get involved. Go to those niches. Find out like what's going on. Uh, figure out where you want to be in the industry and just go for it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly Gibson. You're welcome. Of course. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to Growing Tips. My name is Evan. One of my favorite things about cannabis is the pungent aromas and all the different smells that come from it. But not everyone appreciates it quite the same way as I do. To be a good neighbor, I make sure to clean the air before I exhaust my grow room so as not to annoy any neighbors with those smells.
There's a few different products to avoid smells in the grow room, including uh, deodorizing sprays and ozone generators. But the safest and most common method you'll see will be using an activated charcoal filter. Mine's really, really big, but you can find them in all kinds of different sizes and shapes. And to accompany that, you'll need the right sized fan, including the diameter of the connections, as well as the CFM, or the amount of air it moves. And having this on the exit of your grow room will clean the air before leaving the house, keeping your neighbors happy. Another common way to remove, air, remove the smell from the air is to use an ozone generator. But this will have negative um, health consequences and is illegal in a number of places. So we'd want to avoid that. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and keep growing. This is Basil's Buds, where I talk about someone awesome who I kind of wish was my bud. Kurt Robbins is one of my biggest cannabis heroes for two simple reasons. He's a very talented, weed-focused wordsmith, and his mantra, learn and teach others, applies so well to my field of passion. For myself, as a curious young man new to the world of terpenes, cannabinoids, and cultivars, Guy Rubinsky, Kurt's nom de plume, was and still is one of my preferred authors on the subject. Kurt is a technical writer by trade, focusing on compliance documentation and completing cannabis license applications. On top of that, he has contributed to all of the major channels that you might visit to read about your favorite plant, including High Times, Skunk, and Weed World. If you aren't already following Kurt Robbins on all of your social medias, then you are absolutely missing the boat on quality, cannabis, and culture education. If I've convinced you, make sure you look him up on LinkedIn and definitely throw him a follow on Twitter. Welcome to the Cannabis Show. I'm Chris, we got Hart, Kate, and Basil. And Basil's Buds, yeah, Kurt Robbins. I follow him on Twitter, he's very active on there. Yeah, always dropping great articles here and there. Yeah, man, he's amazing. I mean, he's got a lot of love for the Cannabis Show. Yeah, absolutely. I was almost like, what took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> well, there he is. Yeah. yeah. Do you have an article that you would uh, recommend? Like, anybody uh, starting off? Definitely one of my favorite uh, from Kurt is, uh, it was under Guy Rubinsky, and it was um, CBG is the mother of all uh, cannabinoids. Great so, article. Yeah, nice, yeah. awesome. So definitely yeah. look out for Check that. Check him out. He's so you can ask us anything on the Cannabis Show and our next question, because we are like international, because mm. you know, <laughs> it's YouTube, we can go anywhere. <laughs> uh, this question from Sweden, it's from uh, Nick, or, and are you ready? Okay, ready. So it's You're gonna read it in Swedish? I, well, no, but I'm gonna do my best. It's kind of broken, it, it's actually English is better than mine, but still, uh, am I gonna ask a question first and then he's got a comment after that we'll get to. So it's called cool. a donut, I guess we could say it is. All right, so here we go. Uh, Hey ho, hello. I can't think of any better to ask when you guys and girls. If you were a cannabis patient pushing past 45 and personal med grower that wants to grow his own medicine and moving to Canada and don't want to break any laws, where would you settle down knowing what you know as cannabis informed proud Canadians now know? Now again, that is from uh, Nick or Nicholas and Tuck for it. Tak for den floga. <laughs> nice. That oh, was my best. For, yeah, there we go. I was already saying thank you for your question. Yeah. I, I got uh, that muddle up. Yeah, well, actually, one, one person in our crew is very <laughs> Swedish, so he was all up and up. He's happy. So, uh, well, what's your thoughts on well, that? Well, I think it's important to note that there are a few provinces where you can't just grow like exactly. everyone else. So those are... Quebec, Manitoba, and Nunavut right, right now. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, in my opinion, I would stay right here in my home yeah. province of mm -hmm. Alberta. I think yeah. we have a lot of retail... Uh, opportunities. Um, there's some government stuff, but yeah, you can grow your own here. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I, I think uh, you were mentioning about the, the great water, the water, yeah. Yeah. Air. we've got, we've got Sky friends for days. here already. Yeah. We're always in the top five for like greatest city <laughs> or cleanest true. city. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Or even Edmonton too, I would say. Right? <laughs> but you know, or we could maybe go there. And check this out. <laughs> <laughs> he continues. Thank you so much for you and your show and you being you. One of a kind you all are. Please, please keep it up. If you ever wake up on my side of the Atlantic, up north where the Vikings dwell, and he wrote Devel, uh, please feel free to hit me up. You're the most welcome for a fika, something very Swedish that involved getting together for a sit down, which of course is coffee, like cinnamon buns, sandwiches, and why not cake? At least four to eight times a day. It's true, he says. I got Swim a lot of by fika. for a fika. Why don't you? Nicholas, thank you again. 
Tag für den Vlogger. Nice. <lacht>